In art, the geometric has been associated with the transcendental. In Mondrian, Barnett Newman, and even in Kenneth Nolan, the geometric has been heralded as the timeless, the heroic, and the religious. Geometry, ironically, is deemed the privileged link to the nature it displaces. Geometry and geometric art has been linked to the wisdom of the ancients, the tradition of religious truths, and the meditative practices of non-Western cultures. Geometric art is considered to be continuity with the past. But the social world of today, much of the 20th century, certainly the 21st, and social life is finally becoming a site of pure abstraction. The Geometry of Hope, Latin American abstract art from the Patricia Phelps de Cisneros collection presents the most comprehensive overview to date of the diverse modes of abstraction developed by Latin American artists during the 20th century. Comprised of over 100 paintings, sculptures and works on paper, the exhibition at New York University's Gray Art Gallery affords many New Yorkers their first expansive look at abstract art from the region, as well as a contextual framework within which to better understand its emergence. The Cisneros Collection's extraordinary depth also provides a unique opportunity for scholars to explore this development in its full diversity. The inspiration this work has provided to contemporary artists, poets and musicians has been showcased in public programs held throughout New York City. This exhibition at Gray Art Galleries offers a glimpse on the remarkable outpouring of creativity that informed that particular moment in Latin America. The exhibition highlights stylistic and ideological connections and divergences among artists active between the 1930s and the 1970s. Its title, an inversion of Herbert Reed's 1952 description of post-war British art as a geometry of fear, synthesizes two fundamental features that unite these diverse artists' projects. Their interest in geometric visual language and their utopian beliefs in art as an agent for social change. Two distinct tendencies emerge in the histories charted in the exhibition. While some artists harboured great faith in reason and ideas of progress, others used the same geometric forms to undermine rationality and reformulate the role of art in human experience. The exhibition begins with the work of Uruguayan Joachim Torres Garcia. While living in Paris in the late 1920s, Torres Garcia was one of the few Latin American artists to participate directly in European modernism. He soon became disenchanted with his European colleagues' insistence on rationalization, seeking instead to fuse the rational with the spiritual in a new philosophical system he called constructive universalism. In Torres Garcia's system, the pictogram is, a, is an exactly halfway point between a language that would be completely abstract with no reference, um, for example, as in the work of Mondrian, or, or the tradition of realism. And again, it's this sense that it's not about choosing one over the other, it's about synthesizing and finding the halfway points. Um, and so there's an entire vocabulary, formal vocabulary in his work, that you'll see reappearing again, again and again. This man in here, for example, and you'll even see him there in the book, the fish, these everyday objects, some of them are drawn from uh, specific sort of world traditions and some of them are more contemporary objects. And again, it's the coexistence of the ancient and contemporary that's at the heart of, of Torres Garcia's project. After four decades abroad, Torres Garcia returned to Montevideo in 1934 
and urge artists to join him in creating a school of the South. An attitude, rather than an actual entity, that he depicted as an inverted map of South America. Torres Garcia advocated an end to dependence on Europe and a reorientation towards vital American forms as the basis for both a new art form and a new cultural identity. Just as the influence of Torres Garcia's constructive universalism continues to pervade the Uruguayan art scene today, the provocative artists who launched Argentina's first artistic avant-garde in the mid-1940s still have resonance for contemporary artists. Here, Ernesto Burgos, artist and co-curator of All Is Well That Begins Well and Never Ends, discusses inverted topology, a contemporary collective whose work seems to be a direct descendant of early Argentine avant-garde. This is a collective where they all collaborate as a group to make a specific work. And most of them are architects. I mean, there's a couple architects, I think there's actually one person who's a curator. They function as a group, it's a very interesting idea. I think their canvas is obviously the wall, which is, I mean, it has its own shape, and they're working around it in a different way. Madi was shaping the frame. This space is already framed, and they're cutting it around and out it and breaking the planes, coming in off the wall. Um, so I guess there is a, I guess a process that's similar, which I think they've taken it to the next level, 60 years, obviously, after. Visually, you can obviously make a tie. Unlike previous generations, the young Argentines who founded the Madi Group and the Association of Concrete Invention Art had not traveled to Europe for their artistic formation, but rather forged their philosophies in Buenos Aires through imported publications and heated debates. It's a very interesting moment in Latin American history where we're right in the war years, we're right at the, at the end of the war, and uh, these artists sort of recover the original projects of the Russian constructivists, uh, which is a, a geometric art that's, whose purpose is to transform society, which is to be legible to the common people that will be produced collectively and that will contribute to social revolution. And these are the exact terms that these artists use. And there's a selection again of their manifestos and documents where you can see exactly that language being recovered again. There's a generational break in these artists that has a lot to do with uh, the way that artists were traditionally trained and, that, and how they became professional artists. And for all the previous generations, the previous generations to this one, uh, the way you became an artist was to travel to Europe. For these artists, if you think that when they're 16, 17 years old, 18 years old, going to Europe is not an option anymore. No one's going to go to Paris um, in the early 1940s. Um, there's, there's no Paris left to go to. And so this creates a very kind of radical break. Not only does it mean that their training is different, it means that their whole relationship to the European tradition is different. Um, and that what we might call cultural dependency is suddenly reversed. So there's, I think that's kind of a key moment in, in the history that we're going to see in it, and it shows a, an entirely new confidence in these artists. There's nowhere else they have to go to learn to be artists. Great symposium, and I think one of the most important shows ever, because it's so New York. So, so we're looking at this, and we're amazed to go back to Dosberg, of course, the concrete, the actual physical manifestation. And I'm very interested in the, the Latin American aspect of it. I can see fantastic finesse, I mean a fineness in the execution, not to mention the conception. And to get away from the European uh, correspondences for just a moment and the documentation for just a moment, and to look at the work in the show. Does anybody have anything to say about the paintings? <laughs>